The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. If you have a feeling of insecurity, if you worry about the future, chances are the problem is money. Now, financial security is the Equitable Society's business. It's the business of every one of the representatives of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. These equitable men have brought peace of mind and better life insurance service to more than five million families. They know all forms of life insurance thoroughly. They believe in life insurance. Now, in about 14 minutes, I want to tell you more about Equitable Society men and how they can help you enjoy peace of mind as a member of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Armed Robbery. Its title, The Five Fathom Stick-Up. Most psychologists agree that there is no such thing as a definite criminal type. Criminals vary in their personalities just as do all human beings. But there are certain common denominator qualities you will find most criminals possessing. They are emotionally childish and apt to swing violently and abruptly from one mood to another, are selfish to the highest degree. Above all, they rarely know what it means to be sincerely grateful or obligated to others. In tonight's case from the files of your FBI, we meet a criminal who personifies these qualities. Tonight's file opens in a cottage located in the sparsely settled section of the Florida coast. It is night. In the living room of this modest dwelling, we find Leo Compton and his wife, Anne. Leo? Yeah? It sounds like the storm's letting up. Yeah. Should blow over before morning. What are you doing? Just working on some figures. Not very happy about them either. What's wrong? Well, what with the weather and all, I was only able to work ten days last month. According to my arithmetic, we only cleared enough to make the final payment on our boat. That's fine. I don't think so at all. Why not? You've been skimping and saving for years so as I could buy that boat. You needed it to make a living. Yeah, I know, but I hope by now to be able to do something for you. Oh, Leo. And to buy clothes, things for the house. You will. I know you will. I can wait. Sure. Meantime, I... Who's there? I'll see Pretty late for the company. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, let me in, will you? Wait. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, sure. Here, here. I'd better give you a hand. Thanks. Just, Thanks. just, just lean on me. That's it. Now, come on. What's uh, wrong with him? I don't know, Ann. Well, who is he? I've never seen him before. Yeah. You sit there. Okay. He's wearing a life preserver. Yeah. What's happened to you, mister? Uh, our boat's sunk a couple of miles out. We had a reef. It's been tough getting in. Oh, oh my goodness. And you go fix him something hot to drink. Sure. I'll get these wet clothes off him right away. That same evening at an FBI field office some 20 miles away, Special Agent Jim Taylor is seated at a typewriter just finishing a report. Jim, have you seen Mr. Barton? Yeah, Tony. Down to police headquarters. No, I found a message at home for me to report here at once. This is my night off. It was. Oh. You've been assigned to work with me. Something big? Yeah. 
Jewel robbery, one of the largest states out on Ocean Drive. You been out there? Yeah, I just came back. What's our angle? Uh, two men who did the job posed as FBI agents. Oh. What are the details? A family named Williams were giving a party tonight. Uh-huh. Two men dressed in dinner clothes presented fake credentials. They asked to see Mrs. Williams alone. Yeah. She took them into the library. One of the men threatened her with a gun, forced her to hand over her jewels, and she was bound and gagged, and the men ran out. How much were the jewels worth? Over $50,000. Mm-hmm. When was the robbery discovered, Jim? Oh, about five minutes after the men left. By that time, the thieves had made a clean getaway. They stole a car belonging to one of the guests. Any further word on them? Yeah, the car was just found abandoned at a dock about three miles from the house. And who turned that up? Local police. They also found a witness who saw two men in dinner clothes get out of the car and into a boat lying alongside the dock. They stole the boat, too? No, the witness said they seemed to know their way around the boat, so evidently it belonged to them. Did he catch the name of the boat? Yeah, it's um, the Dolphin. Mm -hmm. I imagine you already alerted the coastal authorities to be on the lookout, huh? Yeah. Have you got a description of the two men, Jim? Uh-huh. I've already put it on the teletype. Well, what do we do now? Just hope that we get a quick report back on that boat. Morning. Oh, good morning. When did you get out? A couple of minutes ago. Seen these clothes by the bed, so I put them on. Well, that's what they were there for. How do you feel? Okay. Well enough for breakfast? Sure. How about some eggs? I just got them right fresh from the hens. Swell. Well, sit down. I'll have something for you in a minute. Can I watch? Oh. If you like. Where's the fellow that was here last night? My husband? Is that what he is? Yeah. Kind of old for you, ain't he? He went to the store. He'll be right back. I see. What do you folks do here? My husband has a boat. He dives for sponges. You mean he dives with one of them helmets and suits? Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Is that you, Leo? Yeah. I'm out here in the kitchen. How about the stranger? Good morning. Oh, good morning. How you feeling? Okay, now. And cooking you up some breakfast? Yeah. Well, that should put you right back up on top. You excuse me now? Got to go back down the boat. Oh, wait. I'll walk a ways with you. If I got time, ma'am? Go ahead. Just holler for a man. All right. Go ahead. Right. Mister? Compton's the name. Mr. Compton, your wife tells me you're a diver. That's right. Have you got all your equipment there in the boat? Yeah. Then I got a proposition for you. Just listen to what I have in mind. Morning, Tony. Oh, hi, Jim. What'd you do, stay here all night? No, no, I came in about 20 minutes ago. Uh-huh. Anything break? Yeah, I was just on the phone with a sheriff up at West Cove. And? The body of a man was found washed up on the beach there early this morning. Uh-huh. From his description, he sounds like one of the missing jewel thieves. Then something must have happened to the boat. According to the sheriff, that's been pretty well established. Oh. Huh. Well, there'd been quite a bit of debris washed up on the beach from last night's storm, including a life preserver and a number of cushions on which was stenciled the name Dolphin. Well, how'd this man die, Jim? Drowning? Yeah. What about his companion? Sheriff found no trace of him. Well, how about the boat? Any idea where it sank? No, not so far, but the sheriff down there said he'd get in touch with us if anything else breaks. How we doing, Mr. Comp? Well, we should be getting near that reef. That is, if you remember the position right. Well, I told you. There was a buoy in the more than 100 feet from where the boat sank. I heard the bell ringing. We'll be there pretty soon, then. Okay. I think I'll go below and see if your wife will rustle me a little food. Go ahead. Hello. 
Hello. I'm kind of hungry. There's some sandwiches. Help yourself. Okay. We'll be getting there soon. Ain't you excited? Why? Why? There's over $50,000 worth of jewels in that boat. The deal I made with your husband, half that goes to him and you. I know. You still ain't excited? No. Why not? There's something wrong with this whole thing. I already told you. I was working on a boat. There were jewels on that boat. The owner ran on the reef and it sank. And according to the laws of the sea, if we salvage the jewels, they belong to us. What happened to the owner? When we went down, I lost track. You got anything to drink? There's some water in that jug. Oh. <laughs> you know something? You know what's the matter with you? You just don't like nothing. I guess that's what comes from hooking up with an old guy. You get mixed up, scared. That's not so. What you need, honey, is a young guy. Look. Hey there. Come up on deck. We're near the boy. Okay. See you later, sugar. Special Agent Taylor. Uh, Mr. Taylor, this is Sheriff Miller down at West Cove. Oh, yes. Hello, Sheriff. Uh, something turned up down here, and I thought you should know about it. What's that? Well, I got a report that a man swam ashore last night and went to the house of a resident down here, a man by the name of Leo Compton. Uh-huh. Uh, sounds like the man we're looking for. Yeah, yeah, he does. Have you contacted this Compton? No, no, no. I just got the report. He uh, told the story to a neighbor of his. He doesn't have a telephone, so I'm going to get me out there. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I'd better come down to West Cove, too, Sheriff. I'll get a car and leave here within ten minutes. What's the story on your husband? Huh? Has he talked to you? Yes, just a few seconds ago. What did he say? He's down about 30 feet, walking on the reef. Well... And? Yeah, Leo. I've located the boat. Good. Did he find the boat? Yeah. I'm on deck. I'm going down into the cabin now. Right. What's he saying? Tell me, will you? He's going down into the cabin. Good. Shouldn't have any trouble from now on. The jewel's in a bag right under one of the bunks. I hope he remembers that. He will. Want a cigarette? No, thanks. You don't like me much, do you? No. Why? I don't trust you. Now, nah, that ain't the real reason. You're just scared to like me. And? Yeah, Leo. I found the jewels. I'm coming up. Okay. What's he saying? He found the jewels. Hey. He's coming up. Swell. Start the winch. Okay. Will it take him long to come up? No. And that don't give us much time, does it? For what? We're getting us straightened out. Look, I think we should settle something once and for all. You seem to have worked out an idea that because my husband's an older man and you're young... That makes you more attractive to me. Well, you're wrong. All wrong. I love my husband very much. No kidding. Help me bring him over the side. Do you hear me? Okay. All right. I'll take that bag. Let me help you, Leo. Let's see if it's all here. Yeah. There you are. Thanks. Nice work, mister. Oh, it wasn't hard. You better head right in. It's getting dark. Uh, Wait a minute. Huh? Sorry, but we ain't going back to your place. What do you mean? 
You just get on that wheel and go where I tell you. Now, just a minute. You heard me. Uh, he's got a gun. Your gun. That's right. I found it in your cabin. Now, kindly do like I say. return in just a moment to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Most people worry about how they may enjoy future financial security. If that is your problem, then why not consult a man who knows best how to help you? A friendly, helpful man who knows the answers. Your local representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Perhaps you may have had the same experience Mr. Paul Guidesman had. What was your problem, Mr. Guidesman? Well, my wife and I are pressing 40, Mr. Keating, and I don't make big money. We began to wonder what would become of us when we were 60. And then we heard you describe a plan that would give us freedom from money worries and freedom from job worries when we got to be that age. That sounds like the equitable independent 60s plan. Well, that's the name of it. So we telephoned our local equitable man, and he came right over. It was certainly a good day for us when we got acquainted with him. He showed us how we could provide for our future, live wherever we wanted to, and go and come as we pleased, and how my wife would get all these advantages without any more payments if uh, something happened to me. And he proved that we didn't have to be rich to build up our retirement fund over the years. Yes, I'm sure glad I met our equitable representative. Well, that's just the reason that five million other families joined together in the Equitable Society to provide for future security. They wisely consulted a man who could help them best, their local Equitable Society representative. He's not only specially trained to help you build any insurance plan that's right for you, but he has the backing at all times of a staff of experts in the Equitable Home Office. So if you want to take the guesswork out of tomorrow, simply consult your local telephone directory for the name of your local Equitable Society representative or write to the Equitable Society care of this station. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Five Fathom Stick-Up. No decent person would for a minute deny that Leo and Anne did right in helping a stranger in trouble. But beyond that, they should not have gone. Aiding him was one thing. Trusting him, quite another. It's a good, natural human instinct to go to the help of those in distress. But in doing so, we must never lose sight of the fact that criminals often ask for help as a trap to get the upper hand on their victims. It's unfortunate, but true that tonight's good Samaritans came to grief because they were not constantly on their guard. Your FBI again urges you to exercise caution in your contacts with casually met strangers. Our FBI file continues aboard Leo Compton's boat. It is night. Compton and his wife are standing by the wheel. The jewel thief is seated behind them giving orders. Just keep heading due south. I'll let you know when to turn in the shore. Now look, I... Leo, he has the gun. You gotta do as he says. Boy, this is pretty dangerous, though, running on a night dog as this with no lights. If we ain't got lights, nobody sees us. That's how I want it. You didn't tell us the truth before, did you? About what? That sunken boat and the jewels. No, I didn't. I knew it. What's the real story? My brother and I stuck up a party the other night. We made a getaway in that boat. We hit the reef and sunk. Where's your brother? I don't know. When the boat went down, we both did the best we could. But I'm sure he made it. Bill's tough, real tough. Police must be looking for you for that robbery. Sure. But they ain't looking for you. 
You're the best protection I got. That's why we're sticking together till I'm in the clear. Hello, Sheriff. Hello. I'm Jim Taylor. Oh, oh, hello there, Jim. I've been waiting for you. Uh, sit down. Thanks very much. I think I've got quite a bit to report. Oh, you've been out to see this man, Compton? Yeah, but uh, arrived too late. Oh, what do you mean? Well, a neighbor told me that Compton, his wife, and the man we're looking for all put out to sea in Compton's boat uh, early this morning. They haven't returned you? No. But I think I got a motive for their going, too. Oh, what's that? Well, now, look here. <clears throat> Compton is a professional diver. He has uh, full equipment. Yeah. Now, if the jewel thief's boat did sink, which certainly seems logical... The thief enlisted the diver's aid to recover the jewels. Yep, yep, that's right. Mm -hmm. Did you get a description of Compton's boat? Yeah. I've already sent out an alarm on it. Fine. Is anyone out at the uh, Compton house waiting for the boat's return? Yes. I left two deputies out there. Go ahead. Uh, oh, uh, by the way... Yeah? I found these tuxedo pants in his cabin. They obviously belong to the thief. Uh, may I see them, please? Sure, sure, you there. Take them. Thanks. There's a label there in the waistband. Yeah, I see it. French and Company. They rent tuxedos. Their shop is just around the corner from our office. Yes, I called them already. Oh? The store didn't answer, but I got French's home number. And? Well, he was out to a movie. Wasn't expected home till midnight. Well, let's see. It's uh, 10, 15 now. Mm -hmm, yep. This could be a valuable lead, Sheriff. We might find out from Mr. French who the two thieves were. I think I'll drive back to town. you can swing due west. Now head for that light. That's Midway Lighthouse. That's right. It's right at the mouth of West River. That's where we're heading. Up West River? Mm-hmm. We can't do that. Why not? That river's dangerous enough in the daytime. I'm not running up it with no lights at night. Just do like you're told. Look, this boat is all we have. We don't want to lose it. I'll guide you up the river. This is home base for me and know it like a book. How far up do you aim to go? About 20 miles. 20 miles? That far up is nothing but swamp. We stopped just before we hit the swamp. Bayou City. That's my home. Why can't you get off at the mouth of the river? Because it's safer this way. I made a deal with my brother that if we got separated, we'd meet at home. I want to keep that deal. I'm not running up there without lights. Yes, you are. My boat means too much to Stay me. Stay at the wheel. No. Gee, wise gun. Oh, Neil. If you didn't have that gun up. But I do have it. Now get back to the wheel. Jim, are these the clothes? Yeah, the men left them here when they rented the tuxedos. You take that suit. Then. Okay. What about hats? They didn't wear any. No neckties either. Mm. Suit's pretty well worn. Uh, nothing in the jacket pocket. This suit was bought at Neil Brothers here in town. So was this one. No. Doesn't give us much, though. Neil Brothers do too big a business to remember any individual customer. Yeah. Any dry cleaning marks in yours, Jim? Uh, take a look. No, I don't see any. Mr. French gave me a pretty good description of the men. Had he ever seen them before? No. Mm, nothing in these pants pockets either. No. Here's a shirt, Tony. Look for laundry marks. Yeah, you? right. French said both men looked and talked as if they came from back in the swamp country. Mm -hmm. This shirt must have been home laundry, Jim. No laundry marks. Go ahead. Let's take a look at the shoes. Okay. This pair was bought at a shoe store in Bayou City. And so are these. No. Oh. Tony, the pair you got there, are they mates? Yeah. Are both soles worn? Yeah, why? Well, here, take a look at these. Sole on one of them is practically new. Hmm. Yet none of the witnesses said anything about either man being crippled or that they limped. I know. Let's get to a form. Head over there for the 
left bank. Is it safe to go that close to shore? I took you all the way up the river, okay, didn't I? See that little dock? Yeah. Pull alongside. Is this where you live? Yeah. Thank heaven. I don't see no lights on in the house. Maybe I beat Bill back here. Pull alongside. Mm-hmm. Well, get off. Not yet. Why? I got something to tend to first. Look, we've done as you asked. We brought you home. Now get off and leave us alone. It ain't gonna be that easy. Well, why not? You both know too much. All we know is that we want to get away from here. Sorry. I gotta make sure you keep quiet. What are you talking about? I gotta kill you. Put down that gun. Come on! Stay right where you are. Who are you? Oh. I'll be alarmed, Mr. Compton. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Oh, my hand. I don't know what brought you here, mister, but I'm sure glad. Well, Harper himself was responsible for that. What do you mean? You left your clothes behind at that rental shop, Harper. When I examined your shoes, I saw that they'd been bought in Bio City, and one of them was practically new. So what? So that meant that either you or your brother had trouble with one leg. That ain't so. I contacted the doctors here in Bio City and gave them your description. One of the doctors remembered treating you for a broken ankle, and he gave me your address. Why would he do... All right, come on, Harper. Get on your feet. You're coming along with me. Vic Harper was sentenced by a federal court to serve five years for impersonating a federal agent. At the conclusion of this term, he will then serve a 25-year sentence imposed by local authorities for robbery and assault. The two Harper brothers thought they had committed the perfect crime, and for a while it must have seemed to them as if they had. But no crime is perfect, for somewhere in the devious machinations which produce crime, there is a clue left on some unsuspected point. Many times it is not an apparent clue, but while it is true that crime as a business has not progressed in 50 years, it is equally true that in the field of scientific investigation of crime, there has been great progress. In tonight's case, for instance, the very manner in which a shoe had been worn was the undoing of a criminal who had planned very carefully. But that small clue was turned into the criminal's capture by superior knowledge of a special agent. Superior knowledge he had received as part of his training as a member of your FBI. If I should ask you, what do you want out of life, what would your answer be? Own your own home? Give your kids a good education? Have enough money to retire on? If those are some of the problems you haven't licked, then why don't you talk to a man who can help you lick them? Get acquainted with your local Equitable Society agent. Insurance is his business, providing you with the right kind of insurance that doesn't put a strain on your budget. Consult your local telephone directory for the name of your local representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, bank robbery. Its title, killer for hire. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Walter Catlett, Whitfield Connor, Sam Edwards, Georgia Ellis, and Barney Phillips. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Killer for Hire on This Is Your FBI. <laughs>